yes so let's move on to the sixth property which is conjugation properties okay so whatever we have seen in Fourier series we will get the same thing okay so conjugation properties okay conjugation properties okay so before we go into this uh, let me write down this so in general in general the Fourier transform x of j omega is complex so this fellow is complex and hence it can be written as okay and hence it can be written as what it can be written as two ways so one is the regular form that is x of j omega equal to xr of j omega plus j times xi of j omega means real part plus j into imaginary part this again you can write it as modulus of x of j omega multiplied with e power j times angle of x of j omega this is polar form over these two fellows related here <coughs> where modulus of x of j omega which we usually call it as magnitude is equal to the real part square plus imaginary part square whole power half correct so modulus of x of j omega is xr of j omega whole square plus xi of j omega whole square whole power half and angle of x of j omega okay i'll write down little bit below and angle of x of j omega correct and angle of x of j omega would be equal to tan inverse of what imaginary part divided by real part tan inverse of imaginary part by real part so with that in mind let us move to one note okay so note okay yes so what did we do above here we have what did we have done we know that usually Fourier transform is complex and hence it can be written as real part plus j into imaginary part the notation is here so xr of j omega stands for real part of Fourier transform and xi of j omega stands for imaginary part of Fourier transform and so this is a regular way of writing a complex function and in uh, polar form we can write it as modulus of x of j omega multiplied e power j angle of x of j omega and real part imaginary part up uh, magnitude and angle of Fourier transform they are related in this fashion how modulus of x of j omega which is magnitude is equal to real part square plus imaginary part square whole power half and angle of x of j omega is tan inverse of imaginary part by real part okay right now let us write down a small note it says if x of t has x of j omega as the Fourier transform okay if x of t has x of j omega as the Fourier transform then then what happens is that x star of t this fellow will have x star of minus j omega as the Fourier transform okay x star of t will have x star of minus j omega as the Fourier transform means what if you take conjugation of the signal x of t then what should happen to the Fourier transform we should conjugate the Fourier transform and also we have to rotate the Fourier transform so there is only one operation in time domain so what is that conjugation but what happens in Fourier domain you should take conjugation and also the reversal okay so from this if you apply time reversal property what do you get you see that x star of minus t will have what as Fourier transform here x star of minus t will have what x star of 
j omega as the Fourier transform. Why? If you replace t with minus t in time domain, you should replace omega with minus omega in Fourier domain. Why? Because of time reversal property. Okay. So, we will try to prove the first one. So, last second one we have, we can prove using time reversal property. Okay. Proof. Okay. Let's assume this x star of t as a new signal which is x1 of t okay and the corresponding Fourier transform we call it as x1 of j omega okay yes so we can write this or not necessary so let us write down the synthesis equation okay synthesis equation okay what does it say synthesis equation gives what x of t is equal to synthesis means what getting back the signal x of t is equal to how much here? 1 by 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity x of j omega e power j omega t d omega okay right okay we want Fourier transform of its signal x star of t so we will take conjugation here so what do we get we get x star of t is equal to how much 1 by 2 pi ah, integral minus infinity to infinity you should take conjugation of all these guys you get x star of j omega and e power j omega t will become e power minus j omega t d omega so that would be the conjugation of the signal x of t okay but we we don't want in this form right so we want we want to plus sign here so what should we do by replacing the change of variables okay so by replacing minus or omega with minus l so what will happen we get uh, we get what x star of t is equal to 1 by 2 pi. So, what will happen to integral limits here? Because omega is replaced with minus L and note that omega varies from minus infinity to infinity. Now, you replaced omega with minus L. So, integral limits will be inter infinity to minus infinity. You get x star of minus JL. So, here minus omega can be replaced with L. So, e power JLT and d omega will become minus DL okay that minus i just brought it out okay and uh, because uh, integral limits are minus infinity to minus infinity we can bring this negative sign into the integral and hence this happens so this would be equal to integral uh, because you brought minus so integral limits will be infinity minus infinity to infinity x star of minus jl multiplied with e power jlt dl okay now because l is a dummy variable we can replace that with omega so this would be equal to 1 by 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity x star of minus j omega e power j omega t d omega because l is dummy variable we can replace that with omega so definitely what does it mean it means that x star of t will have x star of minus j omega as the Fourier transform. Okay, that's important. So, this finally implies that x star of t will have x star of minus j omega as the Fourier transform. This is an important and nice result. Okay, 